Epic Life Church, Pastor Mike Scan here, lead pastor of Epic Life Church in Terrell, Texas. This is our three-minute Thursday where we take three minutes or less and talk about subjects and topics of the Bible in three minutes or less. Today, the fruit of the Spirit. Now, before I get started, if you haven't done so yet, go ahead and subscribe to our page so that you'll know that it, uh, when a new video comes out. Also, leave a comment on what you thought of our content. And if you have a topic that you'd like me to cover, go ahead and leave that in the comments as well. So let's talk about the fruit of the Spirit. So this past Sunday, I finished a message series called Rooted in the Vine. And we've been looking at Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, and unpacking how that impacts the believer's life. Now, if you haven't seen those messages, I'm going to leave a link below in the description so that you can go back and watch that later after, the, after, after our video here. But I wanted to uh, kind of reveal to us, I think, a very hidden truth that Paul talks about in the scriptures that I think we can actually bypass and miss if we're not paying attention. So uh, that truth is, why is the fruit of the Spirit so important? Because, here's the big truth, it's the evidence of the believer. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the scripture beginning in verse 16. Paul says in chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 16, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not, watch, fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit is against the flesh. These are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Have you ever wondered, why is it that I struggle with things in my life? That's because there's this contention happening between the flesh and the spirit. It goes on, Galatians 5, 19, or 5, uh, verse uh, 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcerer, hatred, contention, jealousies, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresy, envy, murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like. Now watch this, of which I told you beforehand. Watch what Paul says. I told you beforehand, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such things, watch, will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, Paul is clearly clarifying for us as believers of what it means that if you walk in the flesh versus walking in the spirit. He is not saying that if you occasionally sin, this is what happens. Matter of fact, the original translation says those who practice such things. What does that mean? Practice means that you do it continuously. You do it over and over and over and over again. That's not what Paul's saying. Paul's saying that if you live in this, if this is who you are, if you practice these things, you're not a believer. Did I just say that? I did because he said it. For those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But he doesn't leave us there. He tells us what it means to be a believer. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against such there is no law. In other words, you cannot walk in love by yourself. You can't make this happen. This is not something that happens in your life. You can't, you can't make love happen. You can't make the joy and the peace and the long suffering and the kindness and the goodness and so on and so forth happen in your own ability, in our own ability. No, this is a fruit that comes from the Holy Spirit. As a disciple of Yeshua, the fruit of the believer is found in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We cannot produce this fruit ourselves. It's not about being a good person. Oh, I'm a good person. No, this is not about that. It's being a transformed person, being transformed by the Holy Spirit now living inside you. See, you know an apple tree because it produces apples. And we know a fig tree because it produces figs. And all others will be known, the Bible says, by our fruit that we produce. Matter of fact, in closing, I want to say this. Yeshua said in Luke chapter 6, 43 through 44, he says, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. See, in teaching about false teachers, Jesus shares this with us, and he tells us what it means to be a follower and what a follower looks like. See, we're not called to be fruit inspectors now. Don't go out and be judging your brothers and your sisters and, ah, you know, that's not what we're called. But what we are called to do is look at our own life. 
look at our soil and ask ourselves, are we producing the fruit that the Bible says we are to produce? And here's the good news. If you're not producing this in your life, maybe maybe you you don't produce, maybe you produce more of the flesh all the time and not the fruits of the spirit. Can I encourage you to surrender your life to Christ today? To just give up your life and your way of doing things and let Yeshua be the Lord and Savior of your life. That's why he died on the cross, was so that you can experience the new life, the spirit-filled life that's found only with a repentant heart and following him. Anyhow, that's Galatians 5, 21, 20 through 23 in a nutshell. I hope this has blessed you. Shalom. Until we see each other again, we'll see you again. God bless.